All right, hold on. We need to turn around or something because, some yeah, that looked like we were in the dark. Oh, there we go. Better. All right, you do the talking. Hi, I'm not Brock from Rock Hill Farms, and welcome to today's video. I'm out hanging out with Paul again today, and he says he's got an old tractor that I might like. What I really like right at the moment is this sawmill shed they're building. We may come back when this is finished and take a look at how they set their sawmill up. But right now, you, you want to go play with the tractor? Sure. Uh, today's video is sponsored by Rednecks with Tractors. Just look us up any anytime you want to. Brock's got to check all the little features out, like where the oil's dripping from and whether it has a heater or not. That'll probably get edited out. I doubt it. I don't know what year it is, but this is a 580 case. It's a B, 580B. Uh, it's made for construction purposes. Uh, this one did not, but this is the same tractor that would be a backup. And that's the reason for the, all the weight on the backup. The guy I bought this one from told me I had what was called a hydraulic tamp. And he said it was too tall to get in their barn. They wanted to use the stack hay with, so they took it off and then realized they couldn't pick up any hay with it. And they had put the rack of suitcase weights on it. I added the five wheel weights because it's still tippy when you got a round bale on the front of it. And the round bale was out on the front edge of the bucket too. So, uh, and then, the, but the biggest reason that I bought this was I had a 530 backhoe before this. And that was what I used to clean chicken houses with. And it was a uh, manual shift tractor, but it had a shuttle shift where you could go directly from forward to reverse by just pulling the lever back, push on a button to pull the lever back. And it was really cool to clean out chicken houses with. It was short, and the hydraulics on the loader worked about twice as fast as the farm tractor we were using at the time. And uh, an equipment trader that I knew uh, had this, and he'd had it advertised for a long time. I finally one afternoon drove over to his place and looked at it at Verona and I figured that the the hydrostat was weak on it or something because he'd had it listed in the paper for a long time and it was a little bit wet like it is today and I took the thing around drove it around the back of his driveway and in a place where they'd been driving semi trucks through all the time I stuck the loader in the middle of the driveway I just stuck it in as hard as I could and it spun the tires till it killed the motor and I'm like, well, I think the hydro might be okay on it. And that was in 2002. So 21 years ago when I bought it. We've had to overhaul the motor. The uh, It has a four-cylinder. And I'm not sure if it's the 188 or if it's a 213, but it's the one they commonly used in those. They're a super fuel-efficient motor but it got to leak an antifreeze around the bottom of the liner, the cylinder liner. And so we had to do a complete overhaul on it not that many years ago. Actually, I think we have, we need to change the oil in it. It'll be the second time it's been changed since it's overhauled. So without an exact year, just ballpark, what, what's your guess how old this is? Late 70s, early 80s. And I see a machine, I always think, I wonder how much that can pick up. And so we're going to look at the back of it. I saw this. I wondered how much can it pick up. I said, well, they've hung 2,500 pounds on the back of it. We've got 14. 14 of those? I don't know whether those 100 pounds. What? So you got 1,500 pounds probably of those and then all these wheel weights. And these are 125 pounds. I think these are either 75 or 100. So. I, I bet it's got a pretty good lift capacity. You ever yeah. ever run out of lift capacity using this? The back, the back wheels come off the ground. This was a equipment company that had it. Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And then that was the excavation company that we've used it pretty extensively to, to load hay and unload hay with, put hay in the barn, which is a bigger deal for me than it used to be. Like I said, we've got a spear that goes in the bucket. We're uh, using it currently as a man lift to work on this building you see in the background back here. But uh, we have plans, and I have bought the forks to do it with. We're going to build a set of forks where we can set the loader bucket off and put forks on it so we'll have a little lift capacity there. 
probably used it around this sawmill when he moved down here to pick up the things that he skid over. However, Brock gets to drive this one today too. It'll be a little more to his liking because it has two foot pedals and it is fixed to where you can't push them both at the same time and one goes forward and one goes back. We were in that other tractor. It needed to have a go pedal. Just had a clutch and a throttle. I didn't know how to run it. And if Brock grinds the gears, we know he's done something wrong on this. This tractor has something else you wouldn't expect for an tra old tractor to have. It has a hydraulic bucket level. If you lift that thing up, it's going to keep that hard all the way up. This machine was made from 1971 to 1976 and was designed to be a piece of construction equipment. Whenever I sit on it, it feels like the size of tractor I'm looking for, such as the 4 Series John Deere. And it's 50 horsepower and probably weighs about the same amount. The big obvious difference being that this does not have a PTO, so it's not really a tractor, and most of the time it was carrying a backhoe. And the reason that these were popular construction equipment was that the mini excavator, as we now know it, was just coming out and not widely available yet. And also skid loaders, the way we know them now, were not in common use. I just love seeing these old machines still in use. And this is over 50 years old, so I was surprised that it was a hydrostat. But I guess that makes sense. I was also surprised that it had a self-leveling loader with that much lift height. Now, if you really need a tractor, the fact it doesn't have a PTO might be a deal breaker, but you could get a lot of work done around your property with one of these. And when he told me what he paid for it, I was really shocked. Go. Now you'll want to push that back in and shut the key off. I want one. <laughs> um, that stuff like you was cutting. Oh, I see it. Pulling out of the ground. Mm -hmm. I've run over a lot of that with this and then just pop it out of the ground with the loader bucket. It's really stout. Pretty tough deal. That's a good way to do the work, but it's not a good way to sell attachments. <laughs> <laughs> All my manufacturing friends wouldn't like you. You, you might notice something else. It's got a manufactured by a redneck cutting edge on the blade. You probably should go look at that. You, I busted you make your the, own edge for it? Well, I busted the original one, and a friend of mine made one. Mm -hmm. He figured out that he couldn't get anything that was like greater blade to, to where he could put it back on there, so he... Just made me one out of my old steel, but when I broke that other one, I thought, well, I'll be able to bend that back and weld it. Oh, good grief. I couldn't bend that back for nothing. Well, what'd you give for this, and how long ago was that? It was in 2002, and I gave uh, $5,200, and he, and he brought it to me. He's done a lot of work. We use it to log with for a long time, too, and I had a set of forks that would pin on the bucket where you didn't have to take the bucket off to use the forks either. She's a beaut. It, it's not, no uh, win, no uh, beauty contest, but she's got the, the guff when you need to pick something up. Well, so I like old machines. I like unique machines, but it's also about the size of tractor I'd like to have. Uh, you know, the, the horsepower on this one would probably surprise you. We ought to look it up. I, I haven't ever 
tried to look it up, but this one's not equipped with PTO or it didn't even have a drawbar on it. It was made with the attachment stuff to go to a backhoe or a, the hydraulic tamp, which I didn't get with it. But uh, this one has some other little features they put on these that a lot of loaders, like farm tractor loaders, don't have, and that's a level finder. Did you see the level finder? It's right there on the top of that cylinder bracket. See mm -hmm. where they got it fixed up for those two things to meet right there? Yep. And so uh, it had that. Not not like it's a lot of creature comforts or other stuff that was fancy about it. But. Got a custom grill guard there. That's also been used as a pusher, it looks like. I'm sure it was on accident. Oh. But there's a story behind that if you've got yeah. energy for it. Case made a, a deal that went on the bottom of their grill that covered up that pump. Of the hydraulic pump sits right on the front of the motor there. And it was hollow. And uh, I had used it a bunch to load shavings, bedding, or litter with, or whatever. And then I had it on uh, across the road north of my place there, uh, piling some brush and burning piles. And uh, I caught the stuff that was down in that guard on fire. When I figured out it was on fire, it wasn't smoke, I finally seen flames down in there. I'm like half a quarter mile from a pond, and it burned through one of my hoses that goes to the hydrostat and lost all my oil out. And so it's stuck right where it's at, and I had to go find water to be able to put it out. And then the first trip, I didn't get it because it's on fire back in that weight. It looked like a weight, but it wasn't. It was just a cover. And it was on fire back in that cover. And I finally found enough tools that I could loosen and pry that cover off to where it'd fall off. And I got the thing put out. Or else it would have burned up worse than that. Probably would have burned the seals out of my hydraulic pump or something else. But, uh, yeah. I'm liking a fun day. Get so, your heart rate going. So yeah, after trekking a couple hundred yards with a five gallon bucket hunting for water at the pond, of course you can't just get pond water without getting in the pond knee deep. But anyway, that was why it's got the custom grill cover because the other one would hold trash and I didn't want to deal with it catching on fire again. And I could easily, if, if I wanted to, wash that one out real easy, you know, without even having to take it off. So, and it's tough enough to keep a, a sprout or something from getting up there and knocking a hole in your radiator and your hydraulic, what do they call them, a hydraulic cooler. Hmm. Yeah. All right. Hey, so that's well, why it's got that. Well, I appreciate you letting me drive another old tractor. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate you for taking the time to watch this video. And we'll put a link in the, on the screen to some other videos and catch you on the next one. We'll see you next time.